Welcome back to the show, folks. Today's episode is about water. And more specifically, it's about structuring your water. And those of us in the biohacking and longevity field know about, we've heard these concepts, structured water, how the water that we get out of the faucet in big cities, too often um, the molecules are disorganized and we're not able to hydrate our bodies properly drinking this water. So my guests today are Dr. Eric Larakar and Dolph Sanjeev. Santigue. And these two men have invested many, many years of their lives and careers in solving this problem and bringing a product to market that can help to give all of us access to better structured water. The, with the solution is elegant. It's beautiful. It's the Analemma wand. It is stainless steel at one side. The other end is a cylinder of crystal that is filled with structured mother water that has been treated in such a way as to make it extremely stable so that you can use it over and over again to stir your water and to uh, structure that water. So before you stomp off and go, this is complete hoo-hoo, um, it's I invite you to, first of all, go to the website, analemmawater.com, and check out all of the research and the studies that they've conducted on this water that is structured. Secondly, or maybe first, listen to the episode. And if it resonates for you, then go check out the research. But the point is that there's a ton of research around this. And um, these gentlemen are, well, they're pretty compelling speakers. I think uh, you'll enjoy listening to them, if nothing else. So they've also given us a discount code for anybody who decides they want to get their own wand. You can travel with it um, because the well, the stainless steel end goes over the glass end to protect it. So it's really easy to travel with. Um, but I'll let you go to the website and see that for yourself. The discount code is NAT10, um, keeping it simple. And the website is analemmawater.com. And once again, tons of research and studies on that website. So thank you so much for being here. You know how much I appreciate you guys. Make sure that you leave us some comments and reviews. Um, on whatever platform you're listening to this podcast on, because of course, this is how we get found. You know, you can find me at natnidham.com. And now you can also join my new community in Mighty Networks called BSP Community, B for biohacking, S for superhuman, P for performance. And you can get details about the community on my website. There's a whole page that explains what it is, what it's all about, and why you might just want to join it. So thank you so much for being here. Enjoy. Hey folks, just a quick reminder that all of the information presented in this podcast is for information purposes only. No medical advice, no diagnosing, no treatments suggested here. Before you try anything that you hear about or learn about here, make sure that you check with your medical provider. Welcome to the show, Dr. Eric Latakar and Dolph Zantij. It's a pleasure to see you both again. <laughs> nice to be here. Nice to meet you again, Natalie. Yes. So to the listeners, for those of you, I mean, no, none of you will know this, but um, this is our second go at recording the podcast. Our first time we had some technical difficulties. So we decided that rather than subject you guys to a spotty recording, we would just have another amazing conversation, which is it's my it's a win for me because I just means I get to ask more questions. So <laughs> Hopefully it's a win for everybody else. Thank you both so much for agreeing to do this again. Um, so today we're going to be talking about a really interesting subject. We're talking about the power of structured and coherent water. And, but before we get into that, I think maybe we could spend just maybe a couple of minutes talking a little bit about what brought you both into this, into this project, which is, I, you know, from what I can tell from speaking to you both now for a couple of hours, um, is that this is a this is a passion project for you both as much as it's a business and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of, there's a lot of um, good vibration and intention in this. And so I would like to invite you both maybe to share with us a little bit of the background about what brought you to the Analemma project, I will call it. <laughs> Who wants to go first? Shall I? Okay. I will start that. Um, I met off about 15 years ago and we had a mutual concern and that was this planet. And uh, because the uh, uh, Dolph's coming from the, the 
IT business and see that everything is changing, was very changing very fast. And I'm a veterinarian. I saw the how fast, you know, the um, health of animals, human beings uh, was running backwards. Um, personally, I was growing up in the nature. All of my life spent time in nature. And you see that everything, you know, is getting worse. And it wasn't a fast, uh, uh, it was, it was, it's running fast. So we talked and we met, we sat down together and said, well, what can we do? And we didn't have a clue. So we thought, well, let's first see how things work because we don't have a clue, any clue how things work actually. And uh, we are just focus on what we see with our visual, uh, what we can see with our eyes and our visual spectrum, which is somewhere between the 400 and 800 nanometers. Mm -hmm. which is very, very small part of what is going on. Actually, I read an article somewhere that actually uh, with our senses, we only sense 0.05 something percent of the truth. So, wow. which is almost nothing. Yeah. And so we decided to go into research and see, you know, can we understand what life is? And I'm not claiming we still understand, we, we understand <laughs> now what life is, not at all. But through the research, we discovered a lot. And actually, there were the, uh, I don't know if people are familiar with biophotons. Uh, mm -hmm. Fritz Bopp, uh, uh, Professor Fritz Bopp, he invented it. Um, we took over his whole laboratory from Germany, including the researchers. And uh, we were doing like fast research. Almost every week we sit together and uh, just checked out, okay, what did we discover this week? And from then on, we go on. Because usually in science, you spend three, four, five years in doing a research. And it doesn't matter if it's helping this planet, yes or no. It's just for doing the research, if you right. know what I mean. Can I interrupt you for a second? Can yeah. I ask you to maybe de define what biophotons are for the listeners? Because maybe they don't know and, yeah. and it's talking. important to know why they're important. Biophotons are actually... Uh, a, Particles of light, the smallest particles of light. And uh, what Fitzpop discovered that every biological system, actually, they uh, produce light. And that light, uh, if you know how to deal with it, you can count it by biophoton counter. You just put like, for example, a tomato in a dark room and uh, uh, the a computer just counted how many photons are coming out of it. And that okay. some, says something about a healthy system. So it's and, almost like a radiance, right? Like yes, a, and, a, radiance, and a, a radiance, which you don't see. Uh, uh, those equipment we had was capable of making a photo of a candlelight of 45, 50 miles uh, away. So hmm. you, you need very sensitive material for that. And doing that research, especially in the beginning on plants, we found that uh, 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 the, the biggest reaction they gave on water, on different kinds of water. So uh, it took us a half a year, a year, I think, then we already knew we had to go to water. Mm -hmm. Because what is the most, impor most important uh, uh, element on this planet in the cosmos everywhere? We can come to it later when we go to coherence, what it means. So that's how we came up. And then we start researching, researching for years, for years, for years. It's a very expensive uh, thing, what we did because we want to know. And uh, then we never thought before that we were going to go that way, but then we decided to create the most perfect water, which is has the most beneficial health uh, uh, you know, for, you know, for animals, for human beings, for plants, for soil, for everything. And that was another research for years and another a couple of years research to make it stable. We also can come back to that later. Yeah. Because that was the biggest part of it. And uh, we want to prove for ourselves that actually everything what we say, what we believe is true. And that took us all together, I think about 13 years. So 30, then, 13, 13. Okay. Yeah. That's a long yeah. time. Yeah. It's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So that's how it went. That's how, that's how, uh, anything to add Dolph? Oh yeah. Well, at the beginning, we were both very interested in the world of frequencies. Right. That also brought that also brought us together, and uh, what we saw already in the academic world is that everybody is looking to health in a chemical way, mm -hmm. and what we found is that there is much more than that, and uh, we were testing frequencies in many areas, 
And that is why the biophotons played a major role because there we could follow the frequencies and we could see the sinuses and what type of frequencies and what is the harmonic frequency. So we, we looked to the biophotons, but we looked also what is a biological system doing in the infrared and what is it doing in the ultraviolet. So we started to learn the harmonics of frequencies in nature. And that was our learning curve at the beginning. And that is why we found out what is harmful and what is good for nature. And how is nature evolving is from one frequency to the next one. And that was an incredible trip for us. And uh, we did a bit of a team of scientists from all over the world. And uh, that was how we went into the water because that is where we saw that certain frequencies had a completely different effect if you change the water. And that is how it all started. Right. And so by affecting the water, you're able to affect the frequency of the organism that you're give, that is consuming the water, whether it's yes. a plant, an animal or a person. And so and and so that's really interesting. And so you were were you able to observe in nature? Obviously, there is coherent water in nature. It's becoming harder and harder to access for people. But it is it's the natural is would it not be the natural state of water if we didn't make a mess of it in the first place? It should. In principle, yeah. <laughs> but what we saw is that water is so sensitive, it can pick up from the outside world all kinds of other frequencies because it really absorbs frequencies. Mm -hmm. And then you see that the toxins we use in the world and the, the light and all the other frequencies that come in have an effect on water. And what we found is that more than 99% of the water in the world is now polluted with the wrong absorption. And it is very difficult for the water to come back in its original state. Okay, so I guess this is a perfect segue to un explain to people what is structured water, what is coherent water, what happens, you know, what does that mean and how do we, so I don't know who would like to take this, Dolph or, or oh, yeah. Eric, but- I, uh, can, uh, I think I can explain better if I compare it to light, but before we go there, yeah. Um, Look at water. We look at water as H two O. You know, mm -hmm. to uh, uh, but H two O is just you know the name of a molecule. Usually, in not coherent water, those molecules they just move at randomly. You know, they're not working together. Okay. But as soon as you make water coherent, that means that those molecules are going to work together. And I like to compare it with a laser light. You know, when you have like a five watt bulb of light. It won't give you a lot of light because it's, you know, it's a chaotic light. But when you manage them to work together and you get a five watt laser, that means that it is actually coherent light. You know, mm. or, or <clears throat> the light waves, they work together. Then it will burn through a table. Interesting. Same, same counts for water. If you make the water, you know, work together. Well, we visualize it as, you know, it becomes like a liquid crystal. Mm hmm and why is it a lot more powerful than normal water? Because water, like Dol said, is in a constant communication with the surroundings. And actually, we look at disease as an information disturbance. When uh, the information is not right in your body, <clears throat> uh, you know, even uh, all the vitamins, minerals, all of them are information. They have a wavelength. So when water is in a perfect coherent state, it has the maximum uh, capability to receive all the information, the right information that it needs. You know, just look at it as a perfectly tuned radio. Yeah. Uh, if you have like your radio not in tune, then you hear strange noises, stuff like that. That's actually a chaotic water. Mm -hmm. When you have a perfect, you know, setup in your uh, radio, you will get the right information. Yeah, that's and a great that's analogy, actually. So you don't get all the static noise. You're just exactly. getting the pure sound. Okay, exactly. got you. And that's how we look at a coherent water. I mean, nobody knows exactly or molecule wise uh, uh, how it works. And there are a lot of many people have ideas about it. That's what, how we visualize it because we check in the power of the water. And how we did that is by checking it in, in biological system, how it works. Mm -hmm. So, but for you to understand, so that also is a reason, uh, like Dolph said, because of many toxins, which have wavelengths, even if you take the toxins out, the memory, 
you know, the information of that toxin is still inside. Right. And um, uh, uh, think of all the radi radiation that we have now. We think that it's normal to put 5G uh, uh, satellites through in the cosmos. We think that's normal to get a 4G uh, antennas, Wi-Fi stuff like that. But for mo for water, that's not so normal. Mm -hmm. It doesn't like it. Doesn't like it. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think that it's important to to come back to what you just said. Like toxins are not just physical toxins, right? We have we have different right. types of toxins. I mean, there's all the pollution that people are dealing that that is present in the environment. There's maybe also the lack of nutrients is a it's all it's a deficiency. So there's you have the excess and the deficiencies, right? So you have the deficiency of what you need, you have the excess of what you don't need, but then there's also this whole idea of radiation and non-native EMFs. So and I think naturally occurring structured water in nature is water that is running through a stream or running through nature that benefits from the frequencies of the earth. Absolutely. Uh, right. And it will be harder to find that as people, certain people decide that they are going to blanket the earth in 5G. I think, you know, I wonder if maybe we're going to get to a point where it's going to be almost impossible to find naturally occurring structured water. Is it like how disruptive is that going to be to the very source of water that we, you know, that we might have been able to access previously? Well, that is one of the tests that we constantly do. It became one of our biggest concerns. How is water responding to toxins and to harmful frequencies? And uh, to do that, we looked always to the frequency wave that is coming in and how is it responding. And what we saw is that if you really put water under pressure, then it immediately has a side effect into a biological system, into your brain, into your stomach, everything, and also into your emotions. Mm -hmm. And that because your water is filled with water. Your whole body is filled with water. Correct. Yeah. Yes. And that is why we saw the effect of water. And that is how we, we looked to it. We said, if this is harmful, how can you protect it? Protect mm -hmm. your body. And, and what is the response to it to nature? And we, we saw that it has a huge effect. Right. Right. So, okay. So we have, so we've talked a little bit about st structure. And so now let's talk about, and you know, I'm trying to go in order a little bit because there's, there's a lot of topics I want to touch on, but let's talk about how you came to this. So for those of you guys watching this on YouTube, you're going to see that I'm holding in my hand a rather beautiful piece of, of art almost. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a crystal end. So that's about maybe six inches long, maybe. Um, and it's filled with what appears to be water, although I know it's not just water. Um, and then on the other end is a very, you know, very streamlined kind of, I, I'm thinking it's stainless steel. And the cool thing about this is because this is rather delicate and you would not want to drop it on the ground, uh, for traveling and for transport, you can actually put the crystal wand into the, the end that is the, the metal piece. So, Let's talk a bit about this piece of technology and how you came to it. And then we'll we'll back up into some of the science because you've done a lot of experiments to show the effect of drinking water that's been treated with this device. So the device is the analema. Do you call it a wand? Analema, I call it a wand. An, an, I mean, analema, analema stick, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's talk about this and how you came to this. So we now we've identified the problem, right? So the water that we consume is essentially chaotic and so it doesn't serve us is not able to nourish our bodies or plants or animals like any living thing really depends on will benefit from consuming having access to structured water as as information at a cellular le level to the system so now let's talk about how you got from there to here <laughs> So you want to hear a story for 13 years? No, I want the, I want the very short Cole's notes because we're, we're not going to take, people can go to your website and get the 13 year story. Let's, yeah. let's just kind of chop it up into bits. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, first of all, I mean, we've been testing a lot of other devices, which are already on the market because we're not looking into it, you know, to create our own device. And we found out that actually all the devices that we tested, they fall back into chaotic water. And three seconds, five seconds, maximum a half day, day, 
and then you know it's they revert again. Yeah. so you're talking here about like the magnets or those like there's those all, all, all of them have the same system they use magnets yeah uh crystals yeah and, and uh vortexes correct the sharper idea yeah i mean and uh all of it does something mm -hmm. and uh but the idea is, I mean, because we live in complete different times than in the past. You talk about, is there still coherent water on this planet? We couldn't find any anymore. Interesting. Uh, when it comes out of a spring, yes, in some parts it does. We tested uh, uh, glacial water from uh, Greenland. I uh, took even when I was in the South Pole, took some ice over there, tested it and stuff like that. And no, uh, you know, it falls back in a chaotic state. But we live in a complete different times. And uh, uh, these days, the pressure is so big and that the water is not capable anymore of, you know, staying in this natural coherent state. In the past, that was not necessary. Right. Because there was not so much influence. So whatever happens when you drink the water somewhere and it was coherent, it would stay coherent because there was not so much negative pressure. Like, you know, the, the a, a river, you know, goes from left to the right, left to the right. That's because it vortexes itself into health. It goes over the rocks, comes out of the rocks, and etc. So, but these times, it doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, the, it falls back. So, uh, then we decide, okay, we have to do it a completely different way. And, uh, uh, like I said, it's about 13 years of testing and, and research. And, um, actually, the, 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 the dates of the moon... And the sun, everything is very important when you make it. We created devices, try to copy like the cosmos and nature, how they do, 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 do it. We read many, many hundreds of books, added together and try to see if uh, uh, the devices we made, and our first devices cost about 50,000 euros, $50,000. Wow. You know, just for testing and see. So then we came to a certain point that we thought, okay, uh, and, um, it looks perfect now, it's stable. We tested it, yes, it was. And then how do you bring it to the market? Right, a $50,000 device is a bit tricky. Yeah. It's a, it's a bit, it's a bit <laughs> the tough sell. It's, yeah. <laughs> and we cannot guarantee that it stays that way. That's mm -hmm. another story. Yeah. So, uh, but actually the, the end, you know, it's like we could create only like 12 liters per minute, not more than that. So it's also not an idea to put it in what, and we, our idea was to get it around this whole planet. And, uh, but because this uh, water was so stable, we call it the mother water. And um, uh, people know, probably a lot of people know that crystal, you know, quartz crystal is actually, looks a little bit like water. It has mm -hmm. the same structure and only um, uh, the quartz crystal has the capability of that it, all the frequencies from ultra low, low to ultra high will pass through it. And that was very important because if you would like normal glass for it, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't last. Does it distort the frequencies in a way? Normal yes, glass? yes, because it uh, and what it does now, because nature always want to, you know, get into resilience, into mm -hmm. uh, uh, the state as it should be as the way uh, as it is uh, tended as uh, nature tended to be so when you touch with that vial the water it's like almost that the the water outside water is in straight contact with the mother water that's so inside that, that's inside yes, the crystal right exactly and then it starts copying and so that's why you swirl into it and when all the water have been touched by that water it's not even necessary that all the water uh, touches it then it has this perfect coherent state and it will stay in that state. I mean, all the tests that we did later on, we'll go to the, 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 uh, the science. I mean, all the, all the tests that we did on humans, on animals, on soil and plants, all of it is old water, we call it. You know, it's, it's there for three, four months with or uh, without a Wi-Fi, 4G, 5G, we don't care and because it needs to be stable. So... We didn't have, we don't even have one test, you know, with fresh water. Because, Interesting. Because we wanted to be sure that it does what it does and it will stay in its power. And at least we can guarantee for a couple of years that it does. It stays coherent for a couple of years. Yes. So assuming that you can keep it clean, then it will, it will hold its, its coherence. And does it matter what kind of, um, of, um, container it's in like if it's in glass or if it's in does it matter what the container is made of for it to hold its coherence 
Well, not really. Um, uh, like we have these ones, even uh, in, in like also in wood, in uh, uh, not wood. It uh, doesn't matter. But sometimes we like to hold it in the sun uh, because it gives this extra. It works also without the sun, but it gives mm -hmm. this extra. The sun. I mean, the sun gives us all the communication, all the right frequencies that we need, uh, and uh, so uh, uh, that's what I do once in a while when. I'm, you know, my gut tells me I have to put it in the sun, I get, put it in the sun and I use it again. Yeah, but no, it's rest, funny. It I, I was thinking this morning, I haven't put my, I haven't put my crystal, I haven't exposed my crystal to sun in a long time. So I was thinking, yeah, it might be a good idea, especially while it's still summer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the sun, and just to, just to clarify, I think, because people might be wondering, okay, so you're going to go outside and well, or I'm even inside like this, this crystal filled with mother water is constantly being assaulted by non-native EMFs. Like it's being assaulted by 5G, 4G, whatever the case may be, all the electricity in your house, but somehow holding it to the sun helps to, to charge it in a way that doesn't disrupt the coherence and that overrides all of this other incoming negative information. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. And that's because of the power of the mother water. It's really the mother water. The crystal <laughs> is really about allowing it to communicate to the water it comes in contact exactly. with, right? Yeah. yeah, but before you have to mother water, it takes you a full year. So the mother water takes a full year to form. So maybe let's talk a little bit about this because, you know, people will look at this and say, okay, this is really, it's cool. It looks cool looks interesting but why am i paying so much money for this and i think part of why you're paying so much money for this is what goes into making it's not just a question of filling a crystal with a bunch of water so what goes into making mother water uh, to make mother water it takes a full year because you have to go through all the seasons what we found out is if you really want to work with water you have to understand certain laws of nature mm -hmm. And that has to do with, with how certain electromagnetic fields coming from the sun and the moon are working together and how you can optimize it in water and how you can hold it there. To hold it there is the most difficult part. Yeah. That is a, that's a technical thing that we solved after many years. But then you have to go through the entire cycle because if you want to, if you tell the people that you have the full spectrum, it means that you have to go through all the seasons. Interesting. And so when you're making the mother water, is that water exposed to, and not, obviously, I'm not asking you to tell your deepest, darkest secrets, but is, in principle, is it made in a lab or is it exposed to the outside in some way so that it can, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm, oh, I'm a neophyte both. at this, so I don't oh, understand. No. Yeah. No, it's, it's both. It's both. Okay. Yes. We, we, we start in a laboratory. But we don't work with any electricity. We don't work with crystals, nothing like that. It's pure how nature works. So we have to copy part of nature. Mm -hmm. And then we also had to do it for a part outside. So it was not only in the learning curve that we looked at biological systems, what is water doing? We also had to look what is nature doing in its waveforms? And can, can it be copied to water? And that right. was the beauty of it. So this was a quite unusual research that we did, but it was on the end. It was beautiful. We saw how nature is going to work with all those elements and how the elements, like the soil and the air, how they all work together. Nice. So, okay. So now let's talk about how. So you have this mother water. Now you have something that you believe is going to bring coherence and structure to water. And now you're like, okay, now we have to test it. Can we measure the effect of this water on biological systems? And I believe that you've done, and it's a lot of this guys is on the website, but we're going to talk about a few of them here. Um, and I believe that what you've done, you've done some tests on soil, you've done tests on plants, like moving up the ladder, there's soil, plants, animals, and then finally a couple of human trials. So maybe let's start with soil because people forget soil is where it begins, right? If the soil's not healthy, nothing coming out of there is going to be mm. worth much, which may or may not be a problem with our food system right now, but we're not going to talk about that in this podcast. <laughs> so let's, let's talk with where, you, like, basically where you started with the soil. Dolph, you start off with the soil, then I'll go, but I'll take over the human part. 
Okay. The, the soil was for us very interesting. We saw that everything, as you just mentioned, is starting within the soil. There you have the, the right bacteria, the fungi, and all the minerals that you need to, to build something like a plant or a vegetable. And what we saw, especially when we looked at the soil in the world, we saw again that the toxins and the pollution is playing a major role. As a matter of fact, we have killed most of the critical bacteria and fungi in the world at this moment. Mm -hmm. that, that was a huge problem, but it was also for us a great challenge to find out what is this water doing. And what we, we, we tested more than 80 types of tomatoes. We tested, I think, in total, maybe 150 to 200 types of vegetables on multiple places. So it was not one test. But what we saw is that when you give it the right water, first of all, you need less water. And the second thing we saw is that the first thing this water is going to do is that it is be, being absorbed by the soil and the soil is going to change. And then step by step, it first builds up its energy in the soil and then it brings the energy back in the plant. And then you see that the plant is growing in a specific way. What we saw is that the frequencies in the plant were increasing and the light in the plant could increase per year between 30 to 60% year after year wow so this is going back to the biophotons we were talking about before right like this is yeah. how you're measuring the vitality if you will of the plant and the vet and the fruit or the vegetable that's coming from it true but where that is where we also saw something very interesting because this world is looking only to the chemical part of the plant mm -hmm. they look to a tomato and they see is the potassium in it and calcium and iron yes we have the same tomato and you measure the same, but, the, but there was one huge difference. The energy was different and the way how it works together and also how your body is responding to that tomato or that vegetable. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people forget that they are also built up by light and energy. Sure. And your whole system is working like that. There is an intelligence behind that and that intelligence needs a water as communication system. And when you are using this water into the soil, you see immediately a difference. And what we saw, first of all, is that a lot of farmers needed toxins to, to let it grow. Well, the toxins were completely not used after a very short time frame. So they didn't need to use as many, are nothing, you talking about fertilizer? Or, yeah. yeah. And on top of that, I'll give you one example. For instance, what we, we, we tested in a cucumbers and normally when you when a cucumber starts from a small plant to the final cucumber it takes around 16 weeks mm -hmm. what, what we noticed is that when you give it the water in a coherent state it could survive to 24 weeks so the aging of the plant was going down dramatically. So it slows down the aging of the plant. So that means you get a longer season of, of uh, well, you, it increases your yield. Yes, and it increased the quality and it increased the taste. Interesting. So I have a question for you. So I think that I've read somewhere or, or people talk about how you get structured water from eating fruits and vegetables because the plant will naturally structure the water. Do you think that do you believe or has your work shown that but by providing structured water to the soil, maybe it decreases the amount of work that the plant has to do to structure the water? And maybe that is in a way what's helping to bring all these other benefits as well? Or does it just maybe in, improve the soil so much that that it just energizes the plant in a different way? Well, the very first thing you said is that, yes, the plants itself do have already a certain state of coherent water. That's, yeah. that's for sure. But to do that, it needs the energy from the soil and also the structure and the right. water from the soil. Right. So it speeds it up and the quality becomes much better. So that's that's for sure. Yes. Okay. And that is that everything changes because water is a communication system and it can restructure. And that is very interesting. It can restructure the atoms and the minerals of all the products that work together. It is as if this computer system knows exactly how to play chess with all the minerals and everything together. It yeah. knows how, how to play the game. Well, it, it, I mean, and I think the word that you keep using, which is really interesting, is it organizes. It organizes the information so that it's not now just a bunch of random bits of data being thrown in. It's somehow a more 
like just the information's being delivered better and in a more organized way to the organism. It's very important because what we have seen, for instance, if you give it fertilizer, we think that, oh, that is a chemical part. We, we give that to the soil and then the soil will, will pick it up. What we saw is that that is not the case. The case is it must be organized. Mm -hmm. It needs a director who mm -hmm. really knows what to do and in what steps. And that is exactly the role of water. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So, so, so cucumber, the cucumber, so there was the tomato experiment. There's the cucumber experiment. So the cucumbers, the plants lived longer and yielded vegetables for an extra six weeks norm, than normal, which of Double. course means, yeah. So that means that you are getting, you're getting more vegetables from each plant and it's more nutritious and it tastes better. That's it. And a lot of people think that when the plant is growing bigger and faster, then it is better. That's not the case. No. What we found, what we found in many cases in the world whereby they use certain types of coherent water, it takes out the energy of the soil. And then the plant is growing faster. But what we saw is that the soil is increasing in energy. That is the base. And that was the beauty of it. So the base starts with the soil and then the plant is growing year after year. Yeah. So, so how do you, so you clearly, I mean, you're not using, you're not giving farmers a bunch of wands to mix their water. So you must have an industrial. I'm <laughs> <laughs> well, playing around the whole day with the wands. <laughs> you must have an industrial version of, of this beautiful crystal wand. Absolutely. We have really? for, for agriculture, for gardens, and we are now also working for housekeeping. I was going to say, like, will you eventually or will you have a, a device that someone with a home garden, for example, can buy and use at home? In within, or, a few, within a few months. Within a few months. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. Um, that's very exciting. Okay, so let's move up. Let's move up the food chain. We've talked about plants and soil. So now we're moving up to Eric's universe, where we're going to talk about animals and what you saw with animals. Uh, I have to go back a little bit okay. to the soil. And okay. Because there's a lot big connection with the soil, of course, and your of course. health. Um, because it's your gut health. Actually, in one of our first tests, we found that one thing, what, one thing what has happened is that like the margarita, the good fungi in the soil, they love the water. They start growing. And the last test last year that we did, we uh, took actually soil, which had been made dead with uh, glyphosate. And uh, uh, we used them to grow tomatoes and see what happens, you know, with normal water and uh, uh, analemma water. What we saw that after three months, there was an enhancement of 60% of uh, differentiation in DNA from the microbiome in the soil. Really? So that means that the soil will recover. And, from the glyphosate? Uh, yeah. uh, yes. Wow. Yes. I mean, the test is not, it's not big enough to call it, you know, 100% pure science, if, if you know what I mean. Yeah. But there's enough to find over there that we need to do those tests on a bigger scale. Okay. And before we already did tests, we saw the toxins were disappearing, you know, like all the, like, also like uh, aluminium, et cetera, et cetera. Actually, the microbiome does that work. The water doesn't work, do the work. The, the water takes care of it that the right microbiome starts growing. So, okay, because I was going to ask you, how does aluminum disappear? Like things don't just disappear. So what you're saying is that what the water does, this, this water does, is it supports the, the microbiome of the soil. And then those beneficial bacteria and anaerobes or fungi, all, the, all of the things that the organisms we want in the soil, yeah. they then essentially work to almost detoxify the soil in a way. Yes, there's, there's one thing which is called biological transmutation. Yeah. And uh, that means that, you know, we don't have a clue how things work, but it seems that some bacteria, they can, you know, make from one mineral another mineral. mineral. Interesting. If, pe if people don't believe that, then I tell them, how do you think an egg, you know, of a chicken, how, how much calcium should a uh, chicken eat to get all these amount of calcium around an egg every day? Right. 
It right. doesn't eat that calcium. It does biological transmutation from silicon. Interesting. So uh, there's a lot more going on in the nature than we know. We don't have a clue what's happening under, I mean, the soil. It's so beautiful what's happening over there. We don't have a clue what's happening over there. We don't know anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to make a step from there to humans. And okay. uh, I mean, because it's the same system, our, all our good bacteria actually they come from our, under, from the soil. Uh, that's why we, uh, we prefer to eat uh, biologic dynamic, you know, the Rudolf Steiner way, because actually they take care of the soil. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing we found in, in those uh, tomatoes and all plants and seeds that they start communicating with the whole moon cycle, with the sun, everything. And we could prove that, that if you feed the water, they start a far better communication coming up. And we even could prove that uh, after new moon, suddenly the seeds, you know, they get an explosion of light, which Rudolf Steiner already said 100 years ago, you have to plant the seeds after new moon, uh, one day after new moon. My, my son's nanny used to tell me there's a specific time around the moon when we're allowed to transplant a plant, when we have exactly. to do this. And I used to look at her and say, all right, I don't have a green thumb, you go. And frankly, she got my orchids to bloom over and over and over again. <laughs> yeah. Because she she knew the rhythm of the moon probably. Yeah, no, but she was, and she was tuned into this. Yeah, yeah. interesting. That's true. So at first that we did was a lot of testing on animals, human beings, by all kind of energy devices, measure uh, or see what happens. And But there's all, always an issue because it's not called scientific. So... Uh, um, we were looking at the, in you know in the world of science, which is uh, pure science, which is scientifically appro uh, approved, etc. Now we came up to the glycan age, the glycan studies. Yeah. And uh, the glycans actually that's a measurement of the the uh, we can measure the glycans in the blood, and it says something about the state of your immunity, the state of your biological age. Yeah. And we thought, well, this is very interesting, and uh, they published more than hundreds. Uh, 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 more than 100 publications, I think. So uh, we thought this was a good way to go and let's go for it. So we tested a group of people, uh, 21 people, let them drink the water, do a base test, let them drink the water. And uh, uh, after that, you know, after three months, test them again. And what we found that we were starting ourselves that from the whole group, uh, almost everybody had a reverse of aging of one to 12 years. Yeah, I, I, I saw that data. Months. It's very yeah. impressive. Yeah. yeah. So, and then, okay, it didn't end over there. We're still doing a lot of tests. Actually, at this moment, we're in the middle of a huge amount of tests. We are doing an ATP study to see, actually check in the blood what's happening with the ATP. And ATP says something of the quality of the mitochondria. And the mm -hmm. mitochondria are the most important species actually in our body and as you know it has been proved that mitochondria actually are bacteria yes from the past so you go back to the to microbiome so we're doing a double blind placebo study on atp we're doing a double blind placebo uh, controlled study on brain waves which we already did before and yeah. we could prove that in, in in a split second when you drink the water your brain starts reacting on it probably is through the nervous vagus to your brain and we could see immediately changes yeah, no. I wanted I yeah, I just wanted to go back to that because that's a really interesting study you talk about on your website where you use an EEG device. So this is like, you know, this is a and this is not not like the biophoton machine no. which maybe is a bit more less it's less common if you will. It's mm -hmm. it's a bit more of a stretch for some people, but an EEG is an established way to measure brain waves and you actually showed that after like almost immediately after drinking treated water with analemma, so coherent structured water, people's brains became more coherent. Exactly. exactly. We al already proved that in a double blind study. Uh, even on on, uh, on, uh, uh, on twins, you know, we change them, you drink the water, I change them because they, they look a lot the same. At this moment, we're, we're doing everything. And uh, we're also doing a double blind uh, uh, placebo control uh, study on microbiome, which is going to be very interesting. So, sure. what, and uh, brain waves, uh, 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 glycan, glycans, everything. Yes. ATP. So, actually, in uh, the half of October, we're going to have a lot more results and see what. So, it's a very exciting time for us because 
uh, let's hope, uh, fingers crossed, that we can actually prove what we're saying. We already proved it, but also on those tests. Yeah, and I think, yeah, and, and you know what, I think that it'll be interesting if when you get your results, if we can maybe add some information to the show notes. I kind of wanted to push the podcast until then, but you, you know, we wanted to get it in now. But uh, definitely, I think it would be really interesting yeah. to do like a little mini update in the... Um... Yeah, but Natalie, a lot of things we already proved, you know? Oh, I know. We're, yeah. yeah. So we're just doing this because uh, 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 we want to have higher numbers of people and we want to do it on different... Uh, uh, today we had a talk, again, we're going to do some tests also with fasting. Uh, water fasting and see what happens over there. There are many tests wrong. We're constantly spending all the money we earn on testing. Yeah. And, well, uh, uh, well, that's the way it is uh, because we want to. Don't forget, we we have, we do we didn't start off doing this to earn money. Mm -hmm. We started off doing this, you know, because we want to have a different planet and yeah. a more healthy planet and healthy people, healthy animals, healthy plants, and healthy Earth. That's why we did it. And I mean, we always said, I mean, if we could get all the water coherent on this planet, then we're done. Then we don't have a business uh, uh, model anymore, but that, that's actually our end goal. Nice. So, I mean, we come from there. So we really want to sh uh, show over and over again, also to ourselves that actually everything is true. So many tests have been done at this moment and uh, also uh, in the soil, we keep on testing and uh, on different ways, uh, but, to go back to the test, I think the, the, the crucial part of it is the microbiome. Mm -hmm. I agree. And yeah, you know a lot about it yourself. A healthy microbiome uh, means a healthy gut, means a healthy brain, means a healthy body. Yeah. Healthy immune system, like the Everything. whole thing. Yeah. Everything. I mean, it's like the soil, right? It's our soil. Is it is our the microbiome. soil. We look at yeah. it, actually the soil. For us, you know, are your bowels. It's mm -hmm. exactly the same. If you look at the, the uh, our system work, actually they're complete, they're exactly the same. The roots, you know, this is your uh, these are your bowels, and the microbiome is which is everything around it, where you take uh, the the nutrients from. Well, and actually, as you said earlier, you get transmutation in the in the gut, right? You get the microbiome, That's you get bacteria good. producing vitamins and min and whatnot. You know, uh, whether it's short chain fatty acids or vitamin B twelve, like you have gut bugs that are producing nutrients for you. That you don't necessarily have to eat so it's exactly the parallels are pretty powerful yeah yeah and you know so water is in that way the most amazing thing there is and maybe to go back people don't realize how much water we have in our body we mm -hmm. learn at school that it's 60 70 percent when you become older you know you get dehydrated a little bit less but actually, 99% of your molecules are water. And uh, if you would count the molecules, uh, like, I mean, proteins, they uh, are maybe 5,000 times uh, more weight than uh, H2O molecules. But if you would count the molecules, and 99% of your molecules are water, is water. And you realize that in the sea, it's only 96% water. <laughs> the rest are salts. <laughs> and uh, cucumber is only 97%, I think. So actually, uh, uh, molecule-wise, your body contains more water than anything. Interesting. So we are a combination of water, a microbiome, and as Dorf said, information. Mm -hmm. And because water is the perfect, at least analemma water, is the perfect communicator, the perfect radio, you know, it gives that whole combination. It gives the right, uh, the, the the right information to the microbiome, to all of your cells, to your mitochondria, etc. So that makes everything a lot easier. Your body doesn't have to work so hard, you know, to keep yourself in shape. Right, right, right. No, that makes that makes sense. Actually, you're just providing you're providing something on a silver platter, and it can move on to the next job. Right. Exactly. 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 Okay, well, I mean, you know, the glycan, the glycan um, study is really interesting. I actually, I have a podcast that I've already published with Dr. Lauk on glycan, on the glycan age test and glycan. So if people want, they can go back to that if they want it. But, but actually on your website, 
you do a beautiful explanation of what glycans are, what the glycan age test is, what that, you know, and how the water seem to affect it for various people. And I think your future studies, it'll be interesting for you to dig into why some people get so much more in more effect than others. And clearly some people you get, you did, you did nothing but ask them to drink a liter a day of this water. That's it. Right. And so, and you, and the, the age range was rather broad. And we know that glycans are also affected by, you know, particularly for women, whether they're postmenopausal, whether they're on BHRT. So it'll be interesting in the future for you to tease out some of that information and see, you know, could analemma water maybe help women who are not using BHRT, mm-hmm. whose glycan age really get it tanks right after they go through menopause. Uh, so I think there'll be no end of of, uh, of experiments for you to run well, in the future. There'll be, there'll, be, there'll be a lot of lot of influences. I mean, we don't know. Yeah. If one of them drinks a half a liter of whiskey a day, correct. You mentioned something. For sure. I mean, because we ask him not to change anything else, you know, because if they would go on immediately, well, you know everything about diets. If you would go on a diet and stop drinking and whatever, then already you have your influences. Absolutely. Absolutely. So and, and in this way, it was very clear for us, you know, that's truly the water is doing the job. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, in that respect, it was, it was, it's a great experiment. So I'm just looking here at all the different questions. And um, we talked about that. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, we're going to, let's talk for a few more minutes here. I mean, we're running into an hour, but we're not quite there yet. So how, so we know that by stirring the water with the wand, we help our drinking water to become more coherent. We can use that water for ourselves. We can use it to water our plants. We can use it for our pets. And then you have to wait for the industrial one to water your garden. We're, we're not quite there. We're we're getting there. it's, It's almost there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. But let's talk about when we're at home. Is it, how do people use it? Like, can they, is, does the water have to be drunk just plain or can we then add supplements to it? Like for example, I will add molecular hydrogen tablets to my water before I drink it. So, and all that is, it's a chemical reaction of the ingredients in the tablet that releases hydrogen into the water. So would that negatively affect the coherence of my analemma water or would that maybe, would my structured water be a better environment to create that hydrogen or do we not know? And I've just given you an idea for another experiment. (laughs) I'm thinking. I can tell. (laughs) You know, because a lot of people like a lot of these, like now a lot of vitamin and, you know, if you think about it, it'll, it would be an interesting question to, to explore. Like there's a lot of supplement companies now are starting to find that people they're tired of popping pills, right? So they're starting to create powders and it would be interesting to see does having a structured, first of all, if we structure the water first and then add the powder, does that disturb the structure of the water or will the water hold? And I'm guessing Rolf is kind of shaking his head at me. So maybe the belief is that it will hold the structure. And based on our conversation, you maybe you haven't done an experiment on this yet, but maybe that would be beneficial for how the body will receive the supplement. Okay. Well, let's first talk about the supplement. Okay. A lot of people use supplements at the moment. Mm-hmm. Does it does it really work? That's a completely different question. And what we see is that something in your system also needs a kind of information system that knows where to place the minerals and the vitamins, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So a lot of people swallow it, but it doesn't work at all, mm-hmm. or or very limited. And what we have seen is that if you use the water. Uh, this coherent water and you use the vitamins then it has a different effect in the body right right so it's what you were saying earlier it it kind of upgrades the communication system in the body yes can i add a little bit to it i always like to tell people you know like you have a bucket you know and there's a lot of holes in it that's how our body is and what we do with a lot of vitamins and minerals we pop a lot of it in you know the bucket keeps full you know but and it's like, you know, open the tap completely and, the, you know, the bucket stays full. But when you close it, you know, everything is out again. If you close the holes in the bottom, you don't need mm-hmm. so much. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I'm personally convinced that if, you know, 
you have the right information, like Dolph says, and you have the right drink the right water. So your microbiome becomes adjusted to it. You don't need so much. Depends, of course, on what kind of uh, situation you're in. I mean, sure. uh, the, the like, I mean, in this country, everybody is completely magnesium depleted. Yeah. And so you will need it, uh, uh, vitamin D in the winter time, etc. But not as much as you know we are taught at school, uh, and and uh, you know how much it's less because yeah. you know it's more balanced in uh, in your gut. So. Uh, uh, usually, I, nobody knows exactly, but I saw some study that big part of what actually on the minerals and vitamins we eat comes out, you know, in the same way. Right. So it depends on, of course, on your whole microbiome again, uh, uh, what the uptake is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we think it's very important. And to come back to your question is that no issue. If you have coherent water, you can, I mean, I do it. I add my stuff my powder in in the okay. water and swirl it uh if i uh if i do my uh, smoothie whatever i do add a little bit of that water in go back to that hydrogen i never tested hydrogen pills but i have like this hydrogen device and i use coherent water for that okay uh okay. so uh, uh uh even sometimes when i like to drink a beer i use it in my beer do you really so, yes Okay, I was wondering about that. So you can use it. I mean, you don't you wouldn't put it in something crazy hot. Like you wouldn't put it into your hot soup because we don't want to risk cracking well, the if, crystal. If you, like if you, if you do it quickly, even that is possible, but don't do it like my wife did to put it in a water boiler and then be surprised <laughs> that it explodes. Yeah, yeah. no that's that's, that's unfortunate. Story. Yeah, that's a different yeah. story. Okay, so basically, so you can use it to stir almost any liquid that that is composed of water and it will be if, helpful. If, there, if there's water in, inside, you can make it coherent. Okay. Yeah. Or you can use it, for example, to stir, to structure the water that you put into your coffee machine. Like my, <laughs> my coffee machine has That's a reservoir at the back. So I've been stirring the water before I fill my reservoir and then yeah. I make my coffee with the coherent water. That's yep. what I do. Yep. By the way, yes. we also got a lot of questions from people, especially from the U.S., because a lot of water in, in the U.S. has chloride in it. Yes, and fluoride. And fluoride. So, so what, let's what talk we, about the water we use, yeah. Yeah, what we recommend is to fill, first filter it, mm -hmm. and then and after the filtration, make it coherent. Okay, so let me ask you this. That's that's a really good point, actually. That is something I wanted to talk about. So for example, I have a system under my sink that is a reverse osmosis system. So it strips everything out of the water. And then I have another step that reintroduces trace minerals and whatnot into the water so that we at least bring, a, you know, it's not, it's not gonna be perfect water, but it'll be better than completely dead water, which is really what comes out of a reverse osmosis system. But then, but having reintroduced those things, we can now we can now structure the water. But I, and I think it says something on your website that you want to use filtered water to for yeah, the, the, to the, get the, the most benefit. Exactly. The, the, I mean, the, the, our uh, uh, wand doesn't take out the toxins. Right. Actually, today I had a, a discussion with. Uh, from uh, you know, uh, we have a lot of problems now over here with blue algae, and what we're going to do is pump up the water through the system and see if the blue algae will disappear. Because if you get the right microbial, mm -hmm. and it'll I'm get rid of it, that'll get rid of it, but it'll take some time. And the toxins after swirling, you know, the toxins are not out of it, the information of the toxins is out of it, but the, the toxins itself not. So, we always recognize, uh, recommend first clean the water at this moment we're working on a combination model mm -hmm. you know for in your kitchen which purifies also all the chemicals out of it and then makes it coherent so that's going to be our next step because nice. of that so like an under the sink system like my system yeah. only better yes and especially like for reverse osmosis uh, you have to be careful <clears throat> i think because like you said it's dead water yeah and water needs minerals mm-hmm and uh, 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 it's like, you know, if you're distilled water, if you're going to drink all of your life distilled water, you're going to die from it because yeah. it takes out your minerals out of your body. So, uh, and sometimes a little bit issue for me is when people use reverse osmosis, probably you did your research and you know what to add into it. Mm -hmm. But I know many people who don't, <clears throat> they yeah. just 
put something in or they throw a crystal in the glass and they think then that's then it's okay but yeah unfortunately not so much not. do you have a do you have a preferred source of trace minerals for your for reverse osmosis water do you is there a product out there that you know of or a way that you would recommend because just even the, just throwing in salt is going to add some minerals but not enough well actually uh sea salt good right. sea salt i good like sea use, salt yeah good sea salt i like to use celtic sea salt salt or you have this product also sold in the u.s it's called quinton sea salt quinton yeah it's yeah. amazing yeah. yeah i mean actually that sea salt because our mineral content in our body is ex the ratio is exactly the same as in the sea mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we have a complete sea inside of us you have an ocean inside of you yeah. So I always would re recommend, and it's quite cheap. I mean, uh, we do we buy a lot of Celtic sea salt, and it has all the minerals. I mean, there's even gold in it. Yeah. You know, and uh, uh, that's I think it's the right combination, and you can buy a very expensive combination, but Celtic sea salt is very very cheap. Yeah. And uh, I I may once in a while I love this this Quinton to take it. You know, just uh, it's amazing stuff. It is amazing. The isotonic is phenomenal. It's yeah. it's amazing when you I actually have a podcast with um, oh, the, his name is escaping me right now, but the gentleman from Kintan and, you know, when you spend an hour talking to him, you kind of walk away and I love the little glass ampules. You yeah. snap the ends. Off. <laughs> it's, it's pretty magical stuff. And it definitely you feel energized. So so that's a really interesting point right so we want to clean out the water we want to make sure that it's not been stripped of its essential trace minerals and those elements that we still need and then we we structure it yep. and now we come out with a water that is what that is essentially what our body needs do you and and i mean i don't know if you've looked at this at all have you looked at deuterium in water at all is this on your radar oh yeah because well, the guys on on the guys at Water and Wellness for Kinton talk about deuterium depleted water a lot. So yeah. yeah, well, we did a lot of we did some tests on that because especially the deuterium uh, plays a role. Uh, especially a lot of people also in the U.S. have done some testing with cancer on that as well. Yeah, yeah, and uh, what we do see is that again, you look only to the chemical side of it. Mm -hmm. And what we have seen is yes, it can play a certain role, but in our case, when you use uh, when you use the wand, the deuterium doesn't change. It's the information system that is changing. And so, do you f do you believe that the deuterium, if there's deuterium in the water, it has less of a negative impact on the system? Maybe we, uh, we didn't prove it, but you don't know yes, it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that's what you believe. We, yeah. Yes, that's what we believe that we think. So we didn't test it. I mean, like Dorf said, uh, we, uh, our water is not deuterium depleted water. It would be strange that when you would swirl and then suddenly deuterium is somewhere, yeah. I don't know, <laughs> yeah, in space. Exactly. Yeah. So that's not going to happen. And uh, uh, the issue, of course, with deuterium depleted water, you know, it's becoming a big thing and uh, almost impossible for normal people to buy. It's expensive. Yeah, it's very, very it's expensive. hugely expensive. And and so, but the the what we hope, uh, let's put it that way, that you can achieve the same effect. You know, when it's more structured, that you don't need that. Yeah, the good thing about our product, of course, is you only buy it once. If you don't break it, it lasts a lifetime. Yeah, and uh, so then it becomes cheap. If you know what I mean. For sure, and, amortized uh, over a lifetime. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, I was looking into deuterium depleted water. First of all, almost impossible to get these days because of the Ukraine war, because you, yeah. most of it comes out of Russia. And then I buy a little bottle, you know, for what is it, 15, 20, 25 dollars. If you drink three of them, it's going to be an expensive day. Yeah. Well, uh, I th yeah, I think with deuterium depleted water and, you know, I'll probably do another podcast on that as well. I think what will certainly for people in certain disease states maybe it's important to... I, i'm con unless i'm convinced of it it's not yeah. that we don't that we don't believe it and especially in cancer uh, etc i mean uh i always would try it uh, yeah be, I, I mean so the it's not that we are saying that we don't believe that story or that yeah. we are against it not at all we emphasize it but the only issue is you know how reachable is it yeah, like accessible and affordable. Yeah, yeah no, I exactly. hear you completely. And it comes down to the mitochondria again, right? It's what you were talking yeah. about before. Like if a structured water that is 
you know, if structured water like this is going to enhance the function of mitochondria and you've got a, you said you have a, a trial going on right now to measure ATP levels before and after, I think that alone is going to be an upgrade for people. Right. Exactly. So exactly. Yes. 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 Okay. Well, um, is there anything we, I mean, we could talk for a very long time, obviously, <laughs> but is there anything that you think is important for people to, to know out of this podcast? And we can always do a late one, maybe next year sometime when you have lots more research, but did we leave anything out or do you think this is a reasonably good introduction to Analemma for the listeners? Well, I think for an introduction, this is more than enough because a lot of people haven't got a clue what water is. For most people, water is really H2O. Mm -hmm. for, us, for us, water is an information system. Yeah. It, it is more than an information system. It brings it all together. There is an intelligence in it. And that is the, the beauty of it. When you really start to understand water, then you understand that it has an effect on everything in your body. And really, it starts for us with the mitochondria. Yeah. And the microbiome. And the microbiome, the two M's, M&M. &M. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the healthy ones. Yeah, yeah. No, the healthy ones. I love it. Yeah. Um, okay, well, gentlemen, any, any, I no, guess, this, any I, parting? I just, just, one, just, just one short word to add to what Dolph says. Uh, when I did a uh, 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 course on, on quantum physics, and uh, I just asked him, this guy, he was promotion on it, is what are the bio quantum computer? And then he looked at me and said, Yes, you understand. Yeah. And that says enough. What is the bio quantum computer? Yeah, it all comes down to quantum physics, doesn't it? Yeah. Yep. At the end of the day, those little things you just can't see, just like the bio photons. Exactly. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much. So if people would like to procure a wand for themselves, why don't we share with them your website your i think you have an instagram account as well um how how do people follow you reach you learn more and the website is uh analemma um underscore yeah what is underscore yeah, I think. yeah then water.com water.com analemma oh. underscore water.com okay yes. and this will be in the show notes anyway um and then do you have an instagram account or am i dreaming about that uh, probably Analemma has, but I don't. No, you don't. Well, smart man that <laughs> <No>. you are. <laughs> okay. Okay. And Analemma, uh, the proper spelling is one N, two M's. Yes. Anna, A-N-A-L-E-M-M-A. -M -M -A. And you've also very generously provided a discount code for our listeners. So if people use NAT10, they will save 10% on their very own Analemma wand. I, you know... I love mine and um, my dog likes it. She drinks all her water from, from her bowl that way. So, um, and my plants too. So I wanna Lovely. thank you both again for your time for the second time. Thank you and thank for agreeing. Thank you so much. Yeah, and uh, what we will do Natalie is that when we have all the research uh, done in the last, uh, in the coming months, then we will uh, offer it to you. Okay. And then uh, we will also publish it on the website. Amazing. Okay, perfect. And and as we said before, your website has beautiful, inf like a lot of information there. So mm. people can definitely spend some time. So thank you both again very much. It's been a pleasure. And uh, we'll talk again soon. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.